Okay, hello everyone. Um, it's um, very pleasing for me to be here. And um, the way this is going to work is I'm going to be uh, talking live uh, over the first few slides, uh, introducing my company and the background. And then we'll uh, jump into a video where effectively um, for the next 30, 35 minutes, we'll actually be playing uh, myself uh, through a recording uh, of this uh, webinar, which is, as you've already uh, read, about waste um, and the sustainable um, industry question. And finally, as Misty said, we will also open up for any questions that you might have. So the agenda, as you can see, uh, is uh, fairly simple, really. Um, what we want to do first is just cover off uh, some of the statistics, really. Uh, some of them are quite alarming, uh, reference uh, the status of waste in the construction industry, and just clarifying the problem. I don't think there is anyone on the planet, I think, who does, uh, who is not aware anymore about the sustainability challenge that we have ahead of us. And then from that, I want to progress into talking about some of the initiatives um, around the world uh, which are being developed and which are running to try and uh, address or uh, mitigate this problem. Uh, there are many, many initiatives. Uh, I need to pick out a few um, to try and just put some more light uh, on what's going on and the fight against the problem. Uh, and then I just want to cover off uh, a little bit more uh, of a dive into one of our uh, solutions uh, within Great Tech, uh, which is known as Advanced Workshop. And this is a solution that's targeted in the construction world at mainly fabricators, uh, rebar fabricators and uh, steel, re, uh, steel construction and precast companies. Um, there are many solutions that technology companies are offering uh, to try and help uh, with uh, the whole sustainability question. This is one that I want to take a bit of a dive into uh, to give you an idea. And then the future um, in terms of how are things going to change, because some things are needing to change. I, I don't believe we can carry on for too long uh, as business as usual, uh, given some of the uh, issues that, that are now presenting themselves in front of us. Um, just looking to move forward okay uh, a little bit more about um, the, the company uh, we have a number of different uh, products within great tech uh, for those of you who aren't aware of uh, who we are what we do um, we act um, in a dual capacity really we are a, a primary leading uh, reseller of autodesk products um, i don't think autodesk as a digital software company needs much introduction uh, they are one of the giants on the globe and we pretty much sell every single one of their uh, solutions uh, as part of our packages as well. Uh, but more interestingly, we have our own IP selection of, of solutions, which you can see uh, near the bottom, uh, the Great Tech portfolio. There's quite a lot of different things we do um, for different um, um, construction professionals and the industry at large. Um, uh, given the time constraint that we have, I don't plan to go through each of them. Um, that is not really the purpose of the uh, presentation. Uh, I'm more interested in, uh, like I said, deep diving into the advanced workshop um, solution line. Uh, and that is on this screen here. And I just want to um, point out that that is the first one on the left hand side, advanced workshop. This is the one that we will touch upon later uh, at near the end of this presentation. But there are a number of different solutions um, for different construction industries within our company. Um, but again, in terms of deep diving to all of them, you're more than welcome to uh, approach myself or Misty after the event, and we can certainly uh, furnish you with much more information. So I'm now gonna move forward to uh, the uh, actual presentation itself on the next slide, and it should start playing in a few seconds. So um, as I said at the beginning, uh, how big is the waste problem that we're looking at. Um, in, indeed, a lot of people are calling it uh, a bit of an emergency. Um, there is also a climate emergency uh, that is being talked about. And waste clearly is playing its part in making this uh, climate problem an even bigger problem. <clears throat> so if we look at uh, some statistics on the actual uh, uh, waste that this industry generates, the first thing to say really is these are, uh, this is data that is collected from various countries, but not all countries. 
Uh, in some countries, especially in the developing world, waste is a huge problem. Um, you see mountains and mountains of waste. Um, sometimes governments don't know what to do with it. This obviously causes a lot of health issues, uh, not to mention the carbon dioxide emissions that these piles cause. So if you look on the, uh, under the raw materials uh, column, we estimate that there are 100 uh, billion tons of um, uh, raw materials that are extracted uh, throughout the world, whether it's developed countries or um, developing countries. These are just estimates. No one really knows the true amount of raw materials that are extracted. But clearly, in the future, we are going to start running out of um, all of the materials that we are today dependent on, whether it's fossil fuels or whether it's iron ore, <clears throat> whether it's cement. Clearly, all of this stuff, once it's extracted from the earth, uh, it doesn't replenish itself. Um, <clears throat> we therefore have to get on top of uh, initiatives to try and cut down on the amount of raw materials that we are uh, consuming at an alarmingly um, increasing rate. Then you have CO2 emissions. Uh, the uh, construction industry is estimated to generate 40% of all um, carbon dioxide emissions, which uh, is, is a huge number. Uh, a huge percentage, should I say. Um, so the construction industry clearly has a very big role to play in cutting down um, uh, the emissions. Then you move to the actual building sites. Um, and then again, it's estimated that of all the materials that are delivered onto sites, um, whether it's prefabricated or um, materials that need to be fabricated on site, uh, whether it's cement, whether it's concrete, uh, whether it's plaster, etc., 30% is the estimate. Um, of all materials that are um, delivered are actually in the end not used uh, for a variety of different reasons, which we'll touch upon uh, in a slide to come. Um, and then finally, I just want to talk about the amount of um, tonnage, if you like, uh, waste that's um, sent back to landfill, just you know, into a big hole, um, not to be seen of ever again. Um, 860 million tons um, in Europe uh, alone. Uh, I haven't got the figure for the world, and that, that is because it is it would be an absolute guess because a lot of countries simply do not have a handle uh, on on data to show how much is actually going into um, landfill. In fact, you could say in some countries the problem is out of control. So, as far as the total um, million uh, tons going into landfill, your guess is as good as mine. Uh, it is very very hard with the sketchy data that we have. But clearly, we have a big problem. So <clears throat> here, I just want to break down uh, a little bit further into what uh, construction waste actually means, uh, because the construction waste is just a terminology. Uh, and then what people attempt to do is look at exactly what constitutes construction waste. So here's one pie chart that I pulled off. <clears throat> and again, what that shows is all the different materials uh, from the construction waste site that are skipped in effect or returned back um, not to be used. Uh, a lot of these um, products, once manufactured, cannot be reused, um, and so they end up being um, sent to an incinerator or a landfill site. And I did a little bit of an analysis on this, and what you see is uh, in that pie chart, uh, over half, um, 57 yeah, 57%, in fact, of uh, the uh, waste from construction sites is, in fact, materials like bricks, clay products, tiles, cement, plaster, all those earthy sort of materials. And that shows you uh, the extent of the problem. Um, there's a lot of data. I don't, don't really want to go into all of the data today, but this is just to give you an idea um, of, about the extent of the problem and what might be contributing to it. More specifically now, uh, I want to look at um, a couple of industries today. Uh, again, because of time, uh, it, I don't have the uh, time to actually go through all of the different industries. That is not the purpose of this um, conversation. Uh, so we'll, we will touch upon the rebar industry and the steel industry. Uh, that doesn't mean the other industries out there, whether it's the glass industry or the cement industry or the tarmac industry or the concrete industry, do not have similar waste problems. The waste problem is agnostic, okay? It exists across all uh, construction materials. So going back to the, the two areas that I want to focus on today, I want to pick up on rebar, uh, the rebar industry. Um, 
And one interesting statistic that I pulled up from the M MDPI sustainability review that was done a couple of years ago is that uh, the uh, rebuy industry, when it comes to carbon dioxide, which is something that we are all uh, desperately trying to get on top of, uh, because it leads to like you know it leads to climate uh, warming and therefore uh, extremes of temperature, which are causing all sorts of issues already. Um, <clears throat> per unit, rebar generates more carbon dioxide than any other construction resource. Now that's a, you know for the rebar industry quite a you know quite a focused statistic, which really uh, focuses the mind because it means that uh, we therefore have to ensure that the rebar we are using is um, manufactured uh, according to purpose. And as far as waste is concerned, we need to get on top of the, the, the waste problem because uh, as you can see from that picture, uh, if you go to any uh, rebar facility, rebar fabrication facility, I've been to quite a lot, you will notice skips uh, somewhere in the yard, sometimes several skips and they're always um, brim full of um, um, off curves and waste products. And the problem is clearly worse in some uh, uh, areas in some companies than others. And there are lots of reasons for this. <clears throat> so how do we cut down on this waste? Um, I picked up on a few um, uh, initiatives uh, which have been used to try and help. Uh, so one is, uh, the uh, nature of rebar when it's actually uh, manufactured. Uh, you know that rebar comes in straight lengths. Uh, you go to any, to any rebar factory, but you also see a lot of rebar in coils. <clears throat> and uh, a lot of companies are investing in, in, in coils because they are optimized uh, with uh, the specific production par parameters. They require less production energy uh, when uh, you're actually uh, putting those into, into shape. Um, they also contribute to reduced wear of straightening rollers uh, on pre-bending machines. They don't need any wells. Uh, they are very high bonding, and they are very compatible with all the shaping machines, uh, the leading systems and straightening systems that, that are out there. So the use of uh, coil rebar is more and more something that uh, manufacturers are opting up uh, for because it is actually being shown to cut waste, uh, and I guess uh, being commercially aware that therefore contributes to their own profitability. The other thing is uh, manufacturing algorithms. Uh, now I've seen some of the manufacturing algorithms that have developed. Um, some look very scientific, and I am no scientist myself. Uh, these actually focus on cost uh, versus design, and they they try to optimize any trade-offs uh, between the amount of rebar, um, the buildability of the uh, final cage, and any cost of insulation because every manufacturer has to weigh these uh, off against each other. And the manufacturing algorithms are technology, technology's uh, input to try and help fabricators um, uh, manufacture with the least amount of waste. The other thing that can be done is the, optimizing the, the actual work process itself. So we know that there are drawings that, that are involved um, always. Um, we know that quantities are taken off from those drawings, sometimes even manually or sometimes using software. Um, and then there's obviously the production process. And optimizing means taking a closer look at all of these different parts of the um, production uh, and design detailing process to see whether uh, the uh, required end um, purpose is being met. Uh, quite often the quantities that are take off manually, taken off manually might be uh, inaccurate. Uh, and organizations need to actually uh, invest time in, in understanding why this is the case. Is it a process? Is it effectively the users um, not actually interpreting the drawings properly? Uh, is the software that they are, being, uh, that they are using uh, maybe out of date uh, or needs updating? Uh, the production process itself, uh, what is happening at each stage of the production process? A lot of the companies that have invested time in looking carefully at these uh, stages of the production process have found a significant savings. So it is always worth doing that, uh, even though uh, people have you know, uh, a lot of workload daily anyway, but these kind of strategic processes where you, where you step back can actually often result in a lot of savings in the longer run. And then you have the uh, steel reinforcement industry, which is the other one that I just want to uh, take a bit of a look at. Um, steel worldwide is used um, it, um, 
in reinforcement, but also on its own um, in the vast majority of construction projects. Um, so again, when you look at steel, uh, if you go on a site, you will often find, um, of course, it varies from site to site, but you will find steel is um, dumped often in a skip somewhere or in a pile, uh, wasted. I've even seen little little mountains of the stuff on some very big construction sites. And you often wonder, what is this down to? And you find that sometimes it's it, it's uh, simple as uh, simple as people being irresponsible when it comes to beam cutting, uh, or they have got fabrication issues uh, in the sense that the the uh, the products that they are being asked to uh, manufacture and cut uh, are not in line with the original specification. So the client then ends up rejecting the steel, and then obviously it has to be repurposed um, and, and then re reproduced. That is where the waste in line lies. People often point to uh, inadequate design details uh, and standards. Um, it can result in waste due to short ends of bars being discarded due to improper planning of cuts. Uh, so how do you combat this problem? Okay, yes, you can optimize your processes within your factory to try and improve uh, the manufacturing process itself. Uh, but <clears throat> there is a trend where more companies now are choosing to uh, purchase pre-assembled steel reinforcement uh, uh, pieces. Uh, and they often go to companies that prior, prioritize responsible uh, material use. Uh, and this is obviously a very welcome trend uh, that companies are showing that they are more responsible in their material use in the first place. Um, and I think uh, involving expertise rather than trying to do everything yourself sometimes is also uh, a, a, a correct uh, way to go. So what are some of the things being done to uh, fix this problem? So if you start uh, with some guidelines um, that I've certainly picked up from the industry in, in my time in it, um, what you find is the uh, during the pre-design stage, um, it should be made very clear what the goals are. Um, of, of the uh, construction process with the focus on waste, uh, so, so it is not overlooked. Um, quite often, even the software that's used uh, at the design stage, uh, if you select your software carefully, you will find that it's actually, a, um, nowadays the innovation is such that even the software will help you uh, design a building or structure with lots of different carbon uh, emission um, uh, alternatives and data. Uh, that, that's shown. It helps you therefore uh, select the design that reduces carbon, just in the same way that you might look for a design which reduces your cost, which is clearly something which companies have been interested in for many years. But now, more importantly, even carbon um, carbon reduction should be um, looked at in the same way. And then during the uh, design and procurement process itself, uh, it's important to uh, review the current process, okay? So uh, what kind of designs are you selecting? Or why are you uh, selecting those designs? What is the carbon footprint of those designs? And what is your procurement process? Uh, are there any areas that can be improved? Where are you buying from? Who are you buying from? Do those people have a responsible uh, recycling um, uh, plan of their own, for example? Um, and this leads to what is called the uh, SWMP, or the Site Waste Management Plan. Um, a lot of responsible companies now have one of these uh, as, a ma as a mandatory part of the construction process. Uh, this helps educate people uh, who are involved in the project. Um, what is the plan? Um, what, you know, how are we implementing procedures? And how is everyone buying into the procedures to ensure that waste is um, cut and eliminated wherever possible? Um, and so these plans more and more uh, are now becoming widespread. The other thing that a lot of companies now, now do to try and reduce waste is uh, uh, at the pre-construction stage, they set up a series of KPIs, okay? These KPIs are designed to measure uh, how efficiently a site is being run, um, and they are, they are designed to capture the amount of waste at every stage of the construction process um, in order to ensure that, A, uh, the data is reviewed to ensure that uh, waste is indeed being cut. Okay, from one um, one project to another. And of course, linked to that is continuous mon monitoring. Uh, uh, methods and processes need to be set up so that uh, the, wa the waste uh, accumulation is actually measured accurately. 
uh, and feedback is uh, captured at every stage. After all, without accurate data, there is no way you can move forward. And then after construction, so once a uh, job or um, project is finished, um, it's important to review the process, uh, not just move to the next job. It's important to review the process, uh, check the KPIs, uh, see the amount of waste uh, or a certain amount of waste that has been generated. Is it actually in the right trend? Um, because then, obviously, it's an iterative process. It's important to take the lessons from one site and then apply that, those lessons to another. And of course, to your people too. So now we move on to the uh, digital technology uh, piece. Uh, so what we're interested in knowing here is uh, there are lots of solutions out there, lots of digital solutions, um, software, which is there playing its part to try and help with the waste problem. Uh, clearly, there isn't the time to go to all the different solutions. So for me, I want to concentrate on the Grey Tech Advanced Workshop solution. and. This is where um, we focus a little bit more on the, on the fabrication industries in particular. <clears throat> so one good place always to start is for those people who haven't heard of the Advanced Workshop Solution, uh, which was previously known as Armor Plus, some of you might have heard of it. It's effectively uh, known as an ERP system that's dedicated to the re rebar steel and precast fabrication industries. So it targets the fabrication industries and its uh, purpose, if you like, is to help the fabricator optimize all uh, fabrication activities, uh, whether it's the design, the, the, the sales, the estimation, the detailing, the production, the stock taking, the logistics. It's effectively aiming at the whole uh, production um, process <clears throat> within a fabrication factory, as transport is there as well, of course. Uh, the system also integrates with other ERP systems that a factory might already be invested in for their salary, for their pay payroll, for their accounts. And it's ultimately concerned with the efficient data handling um, of all the different fabrication processes um, involved in um, receiving the raw material or the steel at the beginning, uh, manufacturing and processing it, uh, culminating in the um, prefabricated cage, if you like, or, or the steel cut sections ready for delivery to site. Um, so what industries, again, to recap, what industries does the Advanced Workshop Solution um, serve? So I've mentioned precast. This is the typical inside of a precast factory. Uh, rebar. Uh, rebar is a very strong um, element of the Advanced Workshop Solution. Uh, and then finally, the steel um, fabricator. So the three key fabrication industries um, is, is what we want to talk about here. I should also say that the Advanced Workshop solution is a uh, truly international solution. So our customers in blue here, you can see that they are pretty spread all over the, the globe. So you've got North America, you've got South America, you've got South Africa, you've got parts of Africa, you've got the Middle East, uh, Russia, you've got Southeast Asia, you've got Australia and New Zealand, and also Europe, uh, which is where the solution started out and which is where we have most of our customers uh, today. <clears throat> so on this uh, screen here, what I want to try and uh, present, this is a very rich solution, Advanced Workshop, and sometimes you can spend hours just presenting it and talking about it. My job today is to try and talk to you for uh, under 10 minutes about this solution. Um, so it's a high-level overview. Uh, what you need to know is that the Advanced Workshop solution is known as a single source of truth. Okay, so that's our mission, to give our fabricators a solution which they can rely on for all of these different stages of their construction uh, and their manufacturing process. So it starts off um, with an estimate, if you like, for a, for a job site that the rebar or the steel fabricator might be interested in to see what quantities are involved, what tenders are involved. All this can be done within the advanced workshop solution. Then you can also do your detailing. You can generate your rebar lists, your drawings uh, in 2D and 3D within the same solution. You can then move forward into procurement. So the solution enables you to actually procure additional supplies and miscellaneous services in order to help you manufacture your finished product. So to give you an example, if you are a rebar fabricator and you're fabricating uh, a, a cage uh, for, a, for a pile assembly, 
or, or some other similar product, your your client might actually want that uh, solution, <clears throat> that product to be galvanized. You might not have the ability to galvanize, but you know someone who does. But well, you can procure directly from them. You can generate a delivery note. Uh, they can generate a delivery note. You can create a, a PO, um, uh, a purchase order. Um, and all of this can be done from within this system. So it's all uh, linked to the same data. Once you win um, the uh, site, the job, and you know how much rebar or how much steel you've got to manufacture, you can take that information directly from the initial stages into uh, the production stage at the uh, depressing of a button because it's transferring the data you've already got. You can then start optimizing your machines um, using, again, Advanced Workshop, which already is aware of all of the different machines you have uh, for cutting and bending, uh, in the case of Rebar. It has algorithms already built in to help you allocate the, uh, the work to the right machines, um, and it even tells you if your machines are over capacity, so you can reallocate the work somewhere else. <clears throat> you then can go forward into um, shipment and uh, receipt of materials. So every time you receive stocks, you can actually use this system and some of the hardware that is supplied with it, such as scanners, um, to scan barcodes, for example, or QR codes, to capture the amount of stock coming into your factory to update your stocks automatically in real time so you know how much um, goods you have on your premises. It also has an inbuilt transport planning uh, and delivery um, module, which means that once you've manufactured, you can use that information. Uh, you know how much you've manufactured, you know how many trucks you have, and then it automatically optimizes the production um, delivery routes uh, per truck and even tells you when your trucks will return back to the depot. So the important thing is this solution is about linking all the different stages of your manufacturing process together. So you're no longer reliant on getting your information from different um, sources uh, or different repositories, because that's often where the problems happen, because one part of your business will be telling you that, your solution, that you have a certain amount of uh, product, but if you're using a different solution for another part, it may be drawing its data from somewhere else, and then there is confusion, and that's when mistakes happen. So the important uh, message about Advanced Workshop is it uh, centralizes all of your information into one database. <clears throat> I should also mention traceability. So this is a big thing nowadays. A lot of our clients are always asking about traceability. Can they trace the raw materials? Can they taste, uh, trace the production? Can they trace what is on their trucks? back to the uh, originating uh, steel mill, if you like. Um, and the answer with Advanced Workshop is yes, it captures all the different data that's required, uh, the grading, the steel mills, the heat number, everything that's important to trace where an item came from, especially if something uh, occurs on site and someone needs to trace it back to the originating um, mill or uh, at which activity it actually uh, was manufactured. Um, so this is very important, I think, and it's going to get even more important as time goes on. <clears throat> now all I want to do is share with you um, a couple of slides which are taken or extracted out from the Advanced Workshop system. So if you're using the Advanced Workshop system as a fabricator, this is one of the screens that you'd be looking at. It's got a ribbon at the top. It's very clean and, and easy to access all the different uh, processes within it. And on the screen here, I've just circled a few things that I want to touch upon, which help you optimize your machines and therefore reduce the amount of waste, um, which is the um, obviously the title of this webinar today. So if you look at the, the middle section, what you've got effectively is that the in this rebar factory, the, um, the activities uh, for the production have already been assigned to different machines whether it's uh, cutting, whether it's bending, whether it's cleaning, all that's been assigned uh, by, the, by the system. You also can see which machines it's been assigned to. It's also telling you uh, the production time for each machine to um, engage in that particular activity. It's even telling you the cost um, uh, incurred in using that machine because it takes into account the, the product uh, and the uh, machine and the energy and so on. And then the, finally, under properties, 
um, it even allows you to subcontract directly from the system any activity which you do not wish to do yourself. Um, it's all loaded up with all of your subcontractors. If you want to add new subcontractors, you can do that as well. Uh, and like I said, because it has its own uh, procurement system, you even know how much that subcontractor will charge you because those rates are already loaded within the system. So this enables you to do things very smartly, to produce very smartly, cut down on mistakes, and therefore cut down on errors and waste. Um, this next slide here is effectively uh, a shot from the uh, machine planning um, module. And so here, what you're looking at is on the left-hand side, a list of your machines that are available, uh, laser machine, plane machine, even the mix, the welding machine, the cleaning machine. And what the green and orange effectively means, uh, so it's all color-coded, the green effectively means machines that still have spare capacity. So your production planner can actually allocate more work to these particular machines. The orange ones effectively mean that that machine is now out for the day. It's already been maxed out in terms of allocation. So the tool is very e easily understood by the production operator. They can obviously optimize and try uh, if they want to. They can manually allocate and reallocate uh, um, production activity. Or you can let the inbuilt uh, optimizer, which relies on an algorithm, to do it for you and suggest to the um, user how everything should be manufactured in any given day or any given week. And the beauty about this is it cuts down on the amount of time the user has to spend to try and manually figure out what machines to allocate to. And of course, when we manually do things, we are more likely to make mistakes, which lead to uh, products being rejected, which therefore leads directly to waste. So um, using a very smart um, software like this enables you to actually optimize production and therefore eliminate waste as much as, as possible. But like I said, these are just a couple of slides I've uh, taken from within the system. Um, in reality, we do a lot of demos for our customers um, where we deep dive into the system, really take um, an in-depth look on the, at the way the production planning, for example, works. Here, I just want to share with you uh, a few percentages um, which we glean from our um, many years of work with our customers in terms of what, when someone invests in this sort of solution, what they should expect in terms of um, reduction in waste and uh, associated increasing productivity. So people who might be reliant on manual processes, when they switch to a, a smart system like Advanced Workshop, they should expect uh, a 50% increase uh, in office productivity. And that clearly contributes uh, greatly to efficiency, uh, cost savings, and therefore profitability, which is clearly something every business needs to survive. In the factory itself, there is uh, normally an expected 30% uh, increase in productivity when you switch from manual processes to a more automated process using this kind of solution. Um, and that, that, that is typical all around the world, uh, because remember, we have clients uh, all over the world. And then finally, on the uh, waste uh, percentage, you would expect to cut down on waste on an average 30% in your factory when you actually invest uh, in something like an advanced workshop. And that, when you think about the price per ton of rebar and steel, which seems to be going up every time you look, if you can cut down uh, on waste by that degree, I think your accountants will very, very quickly tell you uh, how much money that actually means um, in practice. Uh, and we certainly have clients who have saved hundreds and thousands of uh, euros uh, just through waste alone uh, by uh, optimizing uh, their processes using the software that I'm, I'm talking about. Um, now, finally, I want to just uh, finish off on uh, a peek into the future in terms of where are we going with uh, waste reduction. Um, and you know, is the is the the news positive or negative? And for me, I think um, there are a lot of positive things happening. Um, yes, if you watch some of the, the the news headlines and so on, you you see that there are still a very big problem connected to the climate and connected to the weather. We as a global community are uh, changing fast enough to avert uh, global, if you like, climate catastrophe in the future. Uh, but let's just see some of the things that are changing. 
Um, there are individual countries that are, if you like, ahead of the game compared to others. There are individual companies that are ahead of the game. So it's obviously a very mixed bag. But what you find is more and more uh, clients uh, at the design stage are asking for what the waste plan is, uh, not just what the uh, uh, the uh, cost plan might be or the uh, time plan, but they're also asking uh, contractors, what is your waste plan? What is your plan for dealing with waste? And it, it is no good just if you like offering assurances. They actually want to see a well thought out, thorough uh, and, and, and signed up plan that a company can can sign up to as something that's very very serious and part of part of their DNA, and this is a very good um, uh, trend um, definitely. Um, also, when you look at digital software uh, in the world of two um, D, but also three D BIM uh, modeling, you find that the software with every iteration is getting smarter and smarter, and it's becoming so so developed that it's uh, enabling people to actually facilitate that that waste process discussion at the design stage, as well as the carbon reducing processes. So for example, right at the beginning, you are able to design um, building options, and you can have a look at the, uh, the carbon reduction um, based on each design. And also, you can look at the uh, waste reduction based on each design. And these things weren't possible only a few years ago, but now they are. And you find uh, on a lot of sites, and I visit an awful lot of sites, I've been in the world of construction for over 20 years, you find now that um, most sites you, that you, you go on, uh, you find that they are mandatory recycling areas. So uh, it is no longer good enough for people just to lose uh, construction waste in holes, if you like, or in, in skips. There are actually mandated recycling areas where uh, waste of a certain nature has to be deposited. And this then feeds into the data collection so the uh, construction companies can see uh, can get visibility on actually how much is being wasted on, on which product. And this obviously feeds into knowing what you're wasting. After all, if you don't know what you're wasting, you can't fix the problem. And uh, linked to this are KPIs. So more and more companies are KPIing their people um, uh, involved in the construction process. Uh, and the KPIs, if you like, are not just a number or an aspiration. They are becoming real serious items uh, with consequences. Um, People are, if you like, getting paid on those KPIs. Um, sometimes incentivizing people uh, is the best way to change behavior. So clearly, this is coming in. Um, governments uh, around the world are taking the lead. So already, a lot of governments demand to see the the, um, the carbon reduction uh, footprint um, of any construction design that's presented to them. In fact, a lot are actually telling the uh, contractors that this is the carbon target that we have with this project. Can you meet it? Can you demonstrate that we can meet it? Uh, and again, linking incentives with that. Um, and then artificial intelligence. I think it's fair to say uh, everywhere in construction now, when you talk about uh, the future, artificial intelligence is often mentioned. Um, I'm thinking of the new smart recycling bins that you see on a lot of sites, which are equipped with cameras, sensors, and machine learning even uh, to automatically sort waste products for recycling, uh, where you see a lot of robots are coming into use. And you also see material recovery facilities, which again using uh, are using advanced robotics to um, um, cycle through waste. The importance of this is it means that that waste can then be recycled, uh, and therefore you know, uh, that contributes to the recycling targets. Because clearly what construction needs to do and has to do is recycle wherever possible. Um, to cut down on that very alarming raw material um, statistic that I shared with you right at the beginning, uh, we've got to cut down effectively on the amount of raw material uh, that we are taking from the earth because it's a finite supply. And then yeah, on the right hand side, I, I don't know if you've heard of the five hours uh, in, in, in uh, waste reduction. Refuse, reduce, reuse, repurpose, recycle. It's a really sort of um, good way of remembering it. Refuse effectively is saying to companies, refuse products where you are not sure whether they're actually um, sustainable. Okay, wherever wherever you can, um, reduce uh, the the use of first use products. Um, encourage recycling, reuse, repurpose. So if you have uh, 
things as simple as cardboard boxes rather than just um, get rid of them, see if you can reuse those, repurpose them, maybe to uh, store other materials or files uh, or paper, whatever it is, and obviously recycle uh, wherever possible. So this is a very good sort of, uh, for me, a very good way of remembering uh, how we can cut down waste. So that brings me to the uh, end of the uh, conversation today. Um, and I will certainly take any questions if any of you uh, have any. Um, but I'd also like to thank you all for um, spending a few of your precious minutes listening to me uh, talk about um, waste reduction in the world of construction. So, any questions? Fantastic. Thank you so much for that, Ismail. Um, and guys, if you have any questions at the bottom of your screen, there is a Q&A. You can click that and plug in your questions. So we'll take a couple of seconds to do that. But I do have a question here for you, Ismail. Um, how do you deal with contractors who are only interested in profit and the carbon reduction situation is of little or no interest? Um, that's a very good question, Misty. Um, thank you for that. Um, I think, well, the first thing I want to say is it's, I would say it's precisely that sort of uh, mindset that we've had for so many years um, that, if you like, has led us to this uh, issue uh, of, of uh, unsustain unsustainable waste um, throughout the world, really. And that's really what we've got to change. Um, Yes, I also understand that companies have got to make money and have got to make profit to su survive, but uh, to sort of make that the sole purpose, I think that's where the problem lies. Um, and I'd split down the uh, the answer really lies in, in two uh, areas. Uh, when you think about construction projects, you, you, you're either dealing with uh, government-funded, uh, government-led projects, or you're dealing with uh, privately-funded projects. Uh, and I'm from the UK, um, and certainly uh, here, what, what you find is the government is more and more um, clamping down quite hard on, uh, if you like, irresponsible waste uh, practices. So, you know, it, when I look at the UK here, we've got the Environment Agency, we've got the Health and Safety Executive, uh, we've got the uh, recent um, Environmental Protection Act, uh, we've got a, a, another act that was just passed um, in 2021, in fact. And so you know, the, the government here is very, very much focused on, on limiting and reducing waste as much as possible. Um, I think in government-funded projects, it's easier because you've got the government uh, enforcing, um, if you like, carbon reduction targets and, and waste targets, which if you want to win the work, you've got to demonstrate that you can actually conform. Uh, sometimes it's more of a challenge when you're dealing with private projects because it's not necessarily the government. Um, client, it could be a private client, uh, who may or may not be as as interested in, in sustainability. Uh, so what's the answer there? Because, uh, uh, you know, in the UK, for example, 60% of all construction um, work is, is privately funded. So it's obviously a very, very big uh, piece of the cake. I think in that circumstance, what you've got to do really is you've got to, you've got to demonstrate uh, that it's in their interest and you've almost got a tie to the profitability and, and lowering of the cost. Um, uh, the fact that if they actually do follow a, a, your waste reduction plan, it's actually going to uh, lead to lower costs, which therefore means that the uh, project is actually going to be more efficiently delivered for them. Uh, so you've got to tie the whole waste and sustainability process and argument along with the commercial um processes that they're so interested in. So cost reduction, waste reduction, and ultimately profitability, which of course clients are interested in. Um, so that's what I would say really uh, in answer to that question, uh, Misty. I think that's a great answer. Um, and if we've got two questions, the first one, are you aware of any government incentives or any things like that um, that would help to drive a company to invest in something like this? I, well, certainly um, over in the UK, there are many government uh, incentives and grants that are available, um, especially to startup companies, um, because the government has dual objectives. They want to encourage um, newer companies to take root, but also they want them to take root in, in the right way. So certainly if you were to 
um, go on to the um, gov.uk uh, website and actually type in uh, grants uh, for waste reduction, you will find that the government, uh, certainly over here in the UK, is very, very sympathetic. They'll even give you free equipment uh, and free consultation advice in, to direct you towards the, the right methods of recycling. And there are also many tax breaks available um, to drive such, such behavior. Yeah, and I think that's very true in the U.S. as well. And I think as this issue with sustainability becomes even more important and, and widespread, we will continue to see those type of incentives roll out. I mean, honestly, every single year. Um, and if somebody would like to reach out in order to maybe get a demo for this and some of the products that you talked about, how could they do that? Sorry, uh, Mr. Mista, did you say that? repeat that, please? Sure thing. If somebody wants to reach out to get a demo of some of these products that you talked about, how can they do that? Okay. Um, I, the, the, the best and easiest way is um, uh, use my email address. Um, Misty, has that been uh, advertised? I know it's not on screen, but I, I can, can plug it in. Yes, I can certainly uh, respond to any any questions or any inquiries at all. Uh, if if we want to do that. So, sorry, Mr. Do, do you want me to say it right now or are you going to put it on? Um, yes, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to plug it in the chat here, actually. So, let's see. Give me two seconds. I'm going to plug it on in there. All right. And what is that email? Uh, email uh, ismail.matda at greatech.com. All right, I'm sending that out to everyone in the Q&A section there so you guys can get that as well. Yeah, and whilst you were doing that, I was just looking up something about the US and there, there, there is tons of uh, funding available from the U.S. government, uh, the, the Department of Agriculture, the Solid Waste Management Grants loans. So it seems to be a similar picture to uh, over here in the U.K., where the government is actually quite seriously helping companies uh, with financial health uh, to cut down on this reduction. 